Hi, how's it going on everyone? Welcome to the third video of the React Native AR series. In this video, I'll be going over some of the fundamentals of Viral React, such as the scenes, 3D objects, animations, and textures. So I've got the application that we set up in the previous video open here in my VS Code, and now I'm gonna run it on my device. Uh, if you can see here in the bottom of my screen, we still have the Hello World text printed. So we're gonna get rid of all this code and basically go through everything uh, from scratch. So let's go ahead and get rid of all of this here. So we'll keep the imports that we have here. So viral ARC and viral text and viral C navigator. So I'm going to head over to the documentation here. So on the documentation here, the top level React Native component that we need is the viral ARC navigator, which uh, we render our AR scenes onto. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm first gonna have uh, the viral AR scene. So we have viral AR scene navigator, and this also works as a navigation stack. So on this page here, as you can see, this is like an equivalent of the navigation stack. And then in this viral AR scene navigator, what we need is an initial scene. And I'll go over the scenes in a second. Then we'll have scene. And then we'll pass on our initial scene here. And then we can also have a style prop on our viral ARC navigator. And we'll just give this a flex of one. And then next thing, let's go ahead and create our initial scene here. So I'll create another function, call it initial scene. Right. So the first thing we need in each scene is the viral AR scene, which is this here. And if we just head back to the documentation uh, under scenes, so the application scenes basically allow us to render our 3D object. And this is like an equivalent of the view. So in the 2D application, this would be our view. So let's go ahead and add our viral AR scene here. And then in here, we can add our items. So in our viral AR scene, we can add our uh, viral text that we can render onto the screen. So we'll call viral text. And then we can pass along our text as well. So in this case, it would just be hello world. And then also we need to position our, our item. So where exactly do we need to position our text? So in a 2D application, you would have like a margin left, margin right. But in this case, if I just head over to the documentation once more, there's a useful graph here that I want to take you through. And it's here. So looking at this graph here, as you can see, we have three positions. So we have the Y position, we have the Z position and the X position. And by default, our camera starts here, which is at this center position, which is zero, zero, zero. So from here, let's just go back into our code and add position to our viral text. And then we'll pass it along as an array. And this will be zero, zero, zero. And then here, let's just uh, add our return method as well. So let's do that. So looking at this position, this means our camera will be positioned right here. So it will be facing uh, that way, which uh, towards our negative Z index. And then on our Y position, it will be position zero. On our X position, it will also be position zero. So if we go ahead and run this, let's see what we get. Uh, let's just fix this uh, wording here. So we have initial scene spelled wrong. Let's just remove the T from there. Okay, so there we go. Uh, I just changed the position to minus five. And as you can see, we have that tiny hello world text popping up there. Uh, let's try and bring it a bit closer. Let's say minus one. And we can apply some styling to this. So we can just say styles equals, uh, let's give it a font size, say 30. 
then we can also apply some color let's uh, bring this a bit further from us so if you want to bring the text closer you bring it closer towards the uh, zero position so minus one will be somewhere there and the further you go it'll be minus two minus three minus four and five and so on so here let me just uh, push it further maybe let's say minus three on the y position i mean on the z position and if i want to bring it up i can go on to uh, my y position so which would be that one there if i want to bring it up so up would be positive so if i say let's say two our text should be slightly above us and then we can bring it down as well let's say minus two on the y position and the text would come down as well and then we can bring it down further minus five so the position of your elements can always be updated like in a state and I'll just add more styling here. So let's say uh, font family. Uh, we'll make it Arial. And maybe increase the font size a bit to 50, let's say. Uh, remove the quotes there and just make it a number. Oops, uh, forgot the S there. So just remove the styles. Yeah, there we go. Then, yeah, so it's style, not style, sorry. So there we go, our text is uh, fixed. Uh, let me increase the size maybe to a hundred. There we go, so we have our hello text over there. And then I'll change the color as well, maybe to something like red. And there we go. So that's it uh, with the text. Next, uh, let's have a look at uh, 3D objects. Now let's go over 3D objects. So in Viral React, you can also load 3D objects, obviously. And uh, in the previous tutorial, I had a small demo where I showed you a rotating cube that I did. So let's uh, go over how you can go about implementing that. So if you scroll down here on the side, uh, we'll look for Viral Box. And just a note, uh, this documentation is quite old. So if you're looking for the up-to-date documentation, you'll want to take a look at this viral community here. So the documentation on the viral media website is being ported over onto this uh, GitHub page here. I did mention this in the previous video, so just uh, take note of that. So let's just head back here to ViralBox. Uh, let's go ahead and import this first. And then uh, instead of this viral text, we can comment this out for now. So what we are gonna do here, we'll just call viral box. And then we'll give it a height. We'll give our box a height, uh, let's say a height of two. We'll also give it a length. So remember, it's a 3D uh, image, so we'll give it a height, length, and width. And they'll all be the same since we're creating a cube. So our length will also be two. And width as well. And then our position, uh, we'll make it zero. And then for Y, we'll bring it a bit down. Uh, minus one and then same for uh, Z position. Okay, let's uh, keep it there. And let's see what we have now. So as you can see, I have this huge uh, white box here right in front of me. And what I wanna do is reduce the size of it. So what I can do is uh, add a scale to this. So if I wanna make it slightly smaller, I can pass this parameter here, yes, uh, which is scale. And basically, you can specify the scale of the uh, object that you have. So I want to minimize the scale to the current uh, uh, size of it, maybe 0 0.2. And this should reduce the size a bit for me. So as you can see, the, uh, I still have the cube, but the size is a bit smaller. So the regular size, it has a height of uh, 2, a length of 2, and a width of 2. But using the scale uh, property, I'm able to uh, kind of control the actual scale of the object. 
Now what we can do to our cube to make it slightly more realistic is add some texture to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and download some uh, textures here on Google. Let me search for uh, wood texture. So I'll go for something like, maybe let's try this one here. Okay, I think that works. Let's save this image. And we'll just create a folder here. Call it assets. And then we'll go ahead and save our item there. Now our assets, and then I'll just give this a name, say wood, and then save. And then back in our code, we'll need to create the material. So we'll first need to import viral materials. So we'll call viral materials. And then using that, we can uh, create our materials, which we'll use to uh, apply texture to our 3D object. So we'll just call viral materials dot create materials. And then we'll give our material a name. We'll just call it wood in this case. And this will be an object. And then we'll pass along a property called diffuse textures, which will basically be a referencing our image. And then here we'll basically call our image. So we'll call require. And then here we'll pass along the path to our image. So it will be in assets forward slash uh, name of our image wood dot jp jpeg and then save and then one last thing we need to do back in our viral box we just need to uh, pass along another property called materials and then this will be the name of the material we just created which is wood and then now if i reload my application as you can see my cube now has a, a wooden texture to it so yeah, you can play around with the materials and the uh, viral box and see what works. And then lastly, let's have a look at viral animations. So here, uh, what we'll also do for our animation, we'll import viral animations just like we did with viral materials. So we'll say viral animations. And then just like we did with the materials, we'll also need to create our animation. So we'll call viral animations. And then instead of create materials here, we'll say register animations. And then we'll pass uh, the name of our animation. So what we want to do here, we just want our cube to rotate. So we'll say rotate. And then uh, we need to pass our duration. And if we go back to the docs here, as you can see, the duration has to be in milliseconds. So we'll pass along duration, which will be 2,500.25 seconds, basically. And then we'll also pass along another property called properties. And then for the properties, the options that we have are opacity, position Y, position X. What I'm looking for is this rotate Y, which will basically rotate our object around the Y axis, which will be basically, so we want it rotating around the Y axis here. So I'll copy this property here, rotate Y. And then we'll want it rotating 90 degrees every 2.5 uh, seconds. So that would be plus equals 90. And then from there, we can just go back to our viral box as well. And then in here, we we'll also pass another property called animation. And then this will take uh, some parameters first will be the name of the animation, which we just created here, and that will be rotate. So copy that, paste it in, 
and then we'll also want this to loop so we'll set loop to true and lastly we'll set run to true as well if we just uh, load our application once more you'll see that the uh, box should be rotating now and there we go so we have a rotating cube right there and as you can see it's now more realistic than uh, the white plane cube that we had in the beginning and that's it for now guys in the next video we'll look at loading other 3d objects on our application